peace, peace, peace. My ascension here, peace to my sister, 22 strand, 79 ether, you melanin, selenium base, black gods of this planet. Um, let me let y'all know real quick, I probably will not be paying too much close attention to y'all questions because to be honest with you, I'm doing this live right now, but I'm doing this live because my phone is kind of messed up a little bit and I really can't do like um, the videos that I want in order to in order to uh, put and upload to my YouTube. So basically, I'm using my live as a form to record my videos and to archive them. So please don't feel no way if I'm not reading out questions because basically, I want to get this out. Um, right now, we in the guard realm. You know what I'm saying? We in the divine realm right now. I'm about to tap into some very much God information and God energy. I've been um, reading this book now. Now, the first thing I want to get into is Every time people are always asking me a book list, give me books, you recommend a book, I need a book for this, I need a book for that. I don't get me wrong, I completely understand, I get it. I, I know that I, I know that I got here from reading hundreds and hundreds of books. I, I get it, I get it. But understand that man comes before the book. And also understand, somebody like myself, it's not easy trying to give you pinpoint books because to be honest with you, you are supposed to be the magnet to the books. Stop looking for specific books and raise your energy to magnetize books towards you. Because let me tell you something. I never looked for a specific book. If I was in a specific place or at a lecture or something and somebody was selling a book, I would buy it. If I'm in some specific place and I see a book I like, I'm buying it. But I never looked for a specific book for a specific thing. Like, I never really did that in my life. I always, every time, and I've said this numerous times, every time I would step out seeking something, instead of looking for the specific aspect of it, I would actually do a form of ritual and visualization of the vagueness that I would hope to receive, which would be something like, I hope to receive knowledge and wisdom today. That could be anything. I hope to receive symbols of prosperity today. That could be anything dealing with prosperity. So for those of you who are always looking for these specific, specific books, understand when you try to specify something, you create a box for it. Now, once again, I'm not knocking books. I'm not knocking you asking for books, but it's very difficult for somebody like me who has a bookshelf of 150 books here, a bookshelf of 150 books there, a bookshelf of 200 books there, a bookshelf. <laughs> it's, it's not easy for me to give you super specific books because I do not read a book for specific information. I read a book to gain knowingness of everything in existence. That's why I read books. I don't read books for specific information. I don't read books for a specific purpose. I absorb and I gorge on information. That's why I buy random books without even thinking about it. That's why some of y'all who ask me for book lists, I'll give you a list of authors instead until you get all those books by those authors. So I just had to open up with that because I'm going to use a book today that to break some stuff down. And I know, oh, book, give me a book list. I need a book list. The best thing you could do for yourself is go to garage sales, go to flea markets, go to um, uh, Salvation Armies, go to what's left of bookstores. And before you go, before you leave your house, before you leave your house, get into a spiritual mode, light some incense, okay, whatever you feel you got to do to change your energy and ask yourself and visualize yourself picking up multiple books that resonate with you. Look for resonance, not specificity, or spe uh, what is it? specificity, whatever. Look for resonance, not specific shit, all right? That's some God shit I just gave you right there. Because humans are always looking for specific things. They want a specific answer. They want the specific article and a specific link that came from. Instead of allowing themselves to be and magnetize energy and information from all directions and just absorb it. Just absorb it. Don't analyze it. Just absorb it. And your own subconscious will give you the conclusion that you're actually looking for. So a lot of y'all are blocking yourselves and don't even realize it. But anyway, just to get that out of the way. Now, every day I wake up, every day I leave my house, I grab random books off my bookshelf. No, I have not read every book on my bookshelf. And I don't give a fuck if I do or I don't. That don't mean nothing to me. No, I don't go seek specific books. What I do is I gather and get my hands on anything that I can retaining to knowledge, retaining to wisdom, retaining to science, retaining to ritual, retaining to occultism, 
pertaining to history, pertaining to anything whatsoever dealing with this third dimensional physical plane, I grab it, I buy it. I don't give a fuck. If I like an author, I buy all his books. All of them. I don't look for the book that, you know, uh, has the best title or the book that's about women or the book that's about only this region of Africa that I like. No, that's human shit. I walk through life as a being. I walk through life as a being. I don't put specific aspects on anything. I don't put specific expectations on anything. I observe and see things as their function and their design by nature. The only thing I adhere to is omniversal laws. And guess what? I don't got no choice anyway. Because whether I acknowledge omniversal law or whether I don't believe it or not, that don't mean it's not going to still govern my ass. It's going to govern the shit out of me. I don't give a fuck what delusion or illusion that I'm playing with in my mind. Omniversal law is not going to let me step out of those laws which can never be broken. Which is why I'm always talking about this man-made bullshit that we want to adhere to it and advise and follow and obey that's man-made and that can always be bent and broken by the ones who are enforcing it. Because the ones who are enforcing it don't follow it. But they enforce you to. Anyway, let's get to this, y'all. This is called Temple of the Cosmos. This motherfucker right here. <laughs> Whole nother level. Um, mind you, I don't know where I got this book from. But i tell you one thing. I know I read the fuck out of it maybe 10 years ago and don't remember. Because I got pages coming out this motherfucker. So... That's another thing I want to touch on real quick. The cycles that you go through through life, depending on the cycle that you're in, dictates the way you're able to perceive or retain the information at the time. I can tell you something on Tuesday very clearly, very precisely, and very accurately on Tuesday, but only until I tell you the next Friday will you understand anything that I said. And as a matter of fact, you might completely forget that we had the conversation on Tuesday. So the cycles that you're in truly dictate how you retain and how you take information. And I've been absorbing books half my, I won't say my whole, I won't lie like that, because there was a point in time I was like regular Negroes, I was scared of books. But until I got my ass locked the fuck up and went to jail, I was forced to love books. And that's where my journey truly began, and that was well over 10 years ago. But anyway, half my life, I've been absorbing knowledge, absorbing, keyword, absorbing absorbing I'm not trying to filter what someone is saying I'm not trying to dictate what someone is saying I'm not trying to filter the book that I'm reading I'm not trying to dictate or overanalyze the book that I'm reading all I'm doing is absorbing that's why it's very hard for me to give y'all books because I don't even pay attention to the title sometimes I don't even pay attention to the author I just read it and I just absorb the information in the book because my goal ever since I've known I've been lied to is purely to know the fucking truth. Purely to know everything I possibly can. Once I started studying what being divine is and what a God is, a God is all-knowing. So if a God is all-knowing, I should not be specific on any information. I need to know what doo-doo is, nigga. I need to know what a roach is. I need to know what sim symbology is. I need to know some of mathematics. I need to know history. I need to know science. I need to know every goddamn thing. I don't need to place myself in a box of what I like or what I don't like or what is a preference to me based on the time frame that I'm in in my life. That's human shit. And I ain't been human in a very long time. So I'll study a fucking big toe and then turn around and study the galaxy. Makes no difference to me. It's all science. That's why certain things I don't even share with y'all because I know the human side was completely shut down and not understand what I'm saying. But anyway, let's, let's just jump into this. I'm ranting because i just been stimulated. I went to go take a nice little walk. I was going to do this outside, but it's kind of humid and I didn't want to be sweating. I'm already sweating in here and I don't want to turn on my fan and all of that. But when I walk out my door, I move in randomness. A being, a being works from the subconscious, not the conscious. When I put on a shirt, I put it on randomly. Yes, I will think about if it's cold outside. Yes, that's just intelligence. 
But besides the intelligence of worrying about whether I'm going to freeze my ass off or whether I'm going to burn up and not put on a bubble jacket in 90 degree weather, aside from that part of intelligence, I move in randomness or so-called randomness. I move in randomness and from the subconscious aspect. That's why all my videos are random. I don't try to plan it. I don't try to make a subject. I do it randomly. So I say all that to say that I was going to get some elements, which is the sun, some air, da 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 da. And every time I walk by, um, I have a specific bookshelf that I keep by my door. So when I go outside, instead of looking for the book I'm currently reading or anything like that, I just grab a random book off that bookshelf. This is one of those books. Had this book for years, but as I'm probably rereading it for the second or third time, I have no clue. It stimulated some shit inside me that connects to a lot of things I'm always telling y'all. And, that's, and see, by the way, that's the beauty of the subconscious and being a being and being an absorber. Because when you overanalyze things and when you overuse your left brain for information and wisdom to knowledge and knowledge to wisdom to understanding, lock it in a box of an analytical aspect, which, by the way, leads to you being like a European. That's why Europeans can't understand spirit. They only want a machine to prove that spirit exists. So if no machine can prove to them that spirit exists, which they've already proven it does exist, electro, electromagnetism alone is proof of spirit, but that's a whole other subject. Because they're stuck in this analytical need and overly left-brain perspective, they can't see past it, so they lock themselves in a box. Now, don't get it twisted. Y'all always hear me that man is left brain, yada, yada, yada. But we're also right access as well, only 20%. So embrace your left and your right brain, men. Just make sure you know which one is dominating you. That's all. That's all. Just like I teach embracing the lower self. Just make sure the lower self don't dominate you. As simple as that. Not trying to be positive 24-7. Not trying to be 100% nothing. In making sure that the lower doesn't dominate the higher, making sure that your brain side, which is conducive to your anatomy and your design, dominates you based on that on that design and on that function and on that purpose. As a man, my design is left brain, so I must make sure my left brain dominates my right. Does that mean my left brain is better than the right? No. It just means if I truly want to be in balance as a man, I got to make sure my left brain stays conducive with my male anatomy. But I'm ranting. Now, um, whew, this chapter I was randomly reading. That's another thing. I jump around in books. I don't care about finishing them. I don't put myself in that box. I gotta finish this book. I don't do that. This is not European school where I'm forced to try to force myself to finish a textbook or force myself to finish. So I, this is not how we move as beings. Being a being is about being a being. So I jump randomly in the books. I jump, I, sw- I skip chapters. I go back. I read backwards, everything. Now, one of these chapters I had to share with y'all. Let's just jump right into it. Hold up. I'm sorry, y'all. I want to make sure. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. See, I'm glad I did that. I want to make sure I start where I think I should start, to be honest with you. Um, because this was just a, a beautiful goddamn thing. All right. Sacred Images. In order to begin to appreciate the role of sacred images in ancient Egyptian religious life, ridiculous, it is necessary to realize the extent to which modern Western consciousness is still enthralled to the second commandment of the God of Israelites. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God. Number one, jealousy is a human tendency. So if you ever hear anything about a God being jealous of any of that bullshit, you ain't dealing with a fucking God. You're dealing with a fucking human that's been anthropomorphized or that's been deified. That's all. This injunction still exercises power over our minds and even our moral sense. But idolatry only became an issue at a certain stage in the evolution of consciousness. Woo! This is why lowering your cycles are so important. And this is why also I talk about the fact that When we look at the ancient Egyptians, never forget that they're at a fallen state. Yes, they're still advanced. Yes, they're still advanced. But what I'm saying is, if you are a trillionaire, and then you fall down to a billionaire, the person who's a thousandaire looks at the billionaire like a god. 
but the person who's a trillionaire looks at the billionaire like a custodian and a janitor. Are y'all understanding what I'm trying to say now? All right, let's keep moving. This injunction still exercised power of our minds even more than it became a certain stage in evolution of the consciousness. It became an issue at that profound moment in the history of the human psyche recorded in Exodus when the God of Israelites, having brought them out of the land of Egypt, pronounced the Ten Commandments deeply symbolic event of bringing the chosen people out of Egypt, entailed forging an entirely new relationship not only to the divine, but also to the natural world. Let me say that one more time. The human psyche recorded in Exodus when the God of the Israelites, having brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt. That means they're leaving a stage of consciousness. Ah, read between the lines. When their God took them out of Egypt, they left a certain cycle and a certain stage of consciousness. When you left the projects and your mama and daddy moved you into a house, you were moved for a new stage of consciousness in a new stage of reality. Were you not? I'm trying to relate this to y'all because this, we could touch on this on every level. It's really not separated. When you was one years old, born in the worst projects in your city, and when you turned 13, you got moved out of those projects, you were moved to a different state of consciousness, right or wrong. Uh, you could call it a different state of neighborhood, reality, um, personalities, and neighbors, but you were moved into a new state of consciousness. And that's why some people, if you notice, they run back to the hood because they're not prepared for that stage. So they run back to the ghetto. They run back to ghetto behavior, all right? Deeply symbolic event bringing chosen people out of Egypt. Nah, nah, nah. The jealous God, oh yeah, excuse me, forged an entirely new relationship, not only to the divine, but also to the natural world. Once I change your state of consciousness to the God I give you to worship, I change your perception to the world that's around you. So when they took the African out of Africa and introduced Jesus to that African, the firstborn son and daughter of that African who adopted that new consciousness of Jesus Christ has completely changed the paradigm of that daughter and that son that came from the wound of that African with the new consciousness of Jesus Christ. So now that daughter and son who came from the African who was aware of the original African deity before Jesus Christ that daughter and son who was never aware to that original African deity has now taken on a new perception of the entire world around them. The natural world. The jealous God of the Israelites was a God whose nature could not be represented. Basically, when we look at these people, when we look at the so-called fake-ass Jews, Ashkenazi, um, Hebrew converts, they talk about that their God can't have no symbol or representation. They don't allow you to resemble God. You can't. Matter of fact, I believe the Muslims do the same thing, too. You, there's no representation of God. Now, when you do that, I want to go to exactly what they're saying. When you're a jealous God and you don't want any form of representation of yourself that can possibly change or that can possibly be transformed into another God, because that's really what we're talking about. God of whose nature could not be represented. This changes the perception of your environment around you. So when I don't allow you to visualize your so-called savior or visualize your so-called source, basically it's like what I'm always talking about, source over surface. I'm showing you the surface, but I'm not showing you the source. Because I say, ooh, you can't know the source. You're not ready for the source. So you get stuck on the surface. And guess what you become? You become a follower of Jesus Christ. You become a follower of Yahweh. Because you don't understand the source, don't even recognize none of that bullshit. Okay? Let's keep going. For the Egyptians, on the other hand, physical representation of gods were capable of becoming suffused with divine content. Say that one more time. For the Egyptians, on the other hand, Physical representations of gods were capable of, of becoming suffused with divine content. The Egyptians themselves did not experience any gulf separating the spiritual from the physical realm. When I separate source from surface, I fractionalize the world. When I give
give you an explanation based on the surface alone, but do not give you the origin of the word that I'm using or the origin of the symbol or the origin of the explanation. I have just fractionalized your perception. I fractionalized your mind. Now you're only seeing fragments. And because you're only seeing fragments, you will forever wonder and you will forever be lost. This is why mind ascension teaches source over surface. I don't want to see your fancy spancy shit in the last hundred years. No. No, I don't give a fuck about what Black's Law Dictionary says about me. No. That's surface bullshit. And that shit was written yesterday. I want to see some shit in a language that existed long before English was even uttered. And then I want to see the source of that too, if you can find it. But if I'm digging and digging and digging and digging and digging and I can't go beyond the source that I found, then bam, I've hit the origin. And until you can show me something older than that, don't say shit to me about nothing. There was no separation from the spiritual and the physical realm. There was little in nature that could not be effectively communicated as divine power. The stars, the sun, the moon, the wind, the earth, all were gods or expressions of gods to them. Animals, plants, trees, serpents, all were expressions of gods to them. For, for the Egyptians, the natural world was full of gods, was full of gods, was full of gods. Well, I don't even want to use that cliche line, but fuck it. I was going to use something else, but let's use the cliche line. If I take a cup of water out the ocean, what's in the cup of water? The ocean. It's the same shit. What our ancestors did, they took the source, which is the all, which is everything, and they distributed it in degrees in the spectrum of multiple gods and goddesses. Based on where the level and the degree that you were at, you can pick that specific God, which was only an expression of the one source and the all anyway. This is why black is a spectrum, not one color. This is why black is an origin spectrum, not even a color. But that's another subject. Plants, trees, serpent. For the Egyptian never world was full of God, the world and the world of physical objects could equally become filled with divine powers. Certain forms and certain substances of which the forms were made could provide effective mediums for spiritual powers to become manifest on a physical plane. The Israelites, and hence Judeo-Christian tradition as a whole, having crossed the Red, Red Sea, came to experience the physical world as opaque, no longer capable of mediating a divine content. The recessive the recessive and the Caucasoid and the Mongoloid have cut themselves off from the medium or the bridge that lets you know that there is no differentiation from the spiritual and the physical. This is why every time you watch a white ass movie, they go, that's impossible. There's no such thing as ghosts. Meanwhile, I don't give a fuck what that nigga say in the movie. I don't care if he say he don't believe in ghosts. Is his ass staying in the house? No. <laughs> If he hear if he hears something in the next room, is he gonna go? There has to be a logical explanation for this. No, that nigga running out of the room and he's leaving. I don't care how much he says he don't believe. Something inside of him still will not tolerate the presence of that energy, even if he can't explain it, because it's something that's innate in us to understand that there is a connection between the spiritual and the physical. Even if we imitate white people and pretend like we don't know this. We still act on it. Because I'll give you another thing. Black people are the most mesmerized motherfuckers when it comes to magic tricks. Why? Why are we so mesmerized when a magician does a trick in front of our eyes? And why do other people go, what's behind your back? What's in your pocket? Well, let me see that cup. Let me see that coin. Let me see that card. But as soon as we see a magic trick, we're like, oh, we start running around. We, we go, it, it's. The magic trick stimulates something inside of us because something inside of us knows there's a connection between the spiritual and the physical. And when we see a magic trick, <coughs> it stimulates that part of us that knows. So even if the trick is fake, we're still mesmerized by the symbolic presence of spirituality in front of us. Let's continue. Uh, 
uh, provide as an idiom. Da, 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 da. Ah, that's another thing I want to get to. Certain forms and certain substances of which the forms were made could provide effective mediums for spiritual powers to become manifest on a physical plane. Y'all have heard me say this numerous times. There are no coincidences. It's not a coincidence that certain pyramids were built out of limestone. It's not a coincidence that the cap of the pyramid was built out of hematite or certain other forms of crystal. These things are not coincidences. Every single thing in existence has a cause and effect based on universal law. So if I'm using gold when I write down an affirmation, that is going to enhance that affirmation. Does that mean the affirmation won't work if I don't use gold? Fuck no. That just means it will not raise the energy of the affirmation, of the intent that I put into the affirmation. So every single thing counts. What you make a sculpture out of counts. You can make a sculpture out of garbage if you want to, and you can make a sculpture out of platinum if you want to. Does it take away the significance to you? No. But does it affect the way that sculpture is going to vibrate and the frequency it's going to hold? Fuck yes. The Israelites sent the Judea in the spiritual world, and the world to world. Okay, all right. The Israelites and Judeo Christians, having crossed the rest of the divine content, spiritual without flow of energy between the two worlds was lost. Okay, so basically, when we adopt this perceptive mindset that nothing is real if I can't touch it and I can't chew on it and I can't cut it open and stab it and break it into pieces then it has to be pseudo, it has to be fake, it has to be conspiracy, it has to be a theory. This cuts you off from existence, and it fractalizes not only your perception, but fractalizes your spirit. This is why the practice of acting like a European can cut you off from all your powers that you're born with. And ladies, I'm really talking to you, because if you remember your grandmothers, your grandmothers were extremely intuitive, extremely intuitive. But you know why your grandmothers were extremely intuitive? Because they didn't follow feminism. They didn't follow white people. As a matter of fact, they hated white people because white people was racist to them at that time. White people, white people were still treating them like slaves. So they actually didn't give a damn what a white person thought. Today, we give a fuck what white people think. We give a fuck about a master's degree. Tell me about your great-grandparents that gave a shit about a master's degree. Tell me about your great-grandparents that gave a fuck what a white man said. Your great-grandparents didn't give a fuck about that. And that's why your grandmama would come to the dinner table talking about she dreamt about fishes and somebody's pregnant because she was connected. She wasn't fractionalized yet. You become fractionalized when you adopt something that's not a part of your design and nature. Now you're fractionalized. Now you're wondering what's real. Is that true? Is that real? Is that this and that's that? But if you study the Manito tablets, if you study the Emerald tablets, you'll find that all truths are all lies. And all lies are all truths. So everything in your existence has a piece of truth in it. And everything in your existence has a piece of lie in it. The same way that's impossible for you to exist without the lower self and the higher self. Duh. And you trying to suppress the lower self to be a namaste motherfucker. Both of them exist simultaneously for you to tap in as an energy. And as an energy based on the cycle and circumstance that you are in. There are some of you with certain times in your life you wouldn't have been able to get through that time if you didn't tap into that monster. If you didn't tap into that animal self. You would have never made it. You would have never made it if you didn't tap into that monster that lives inside you. If you didn't tap into that demon that lives inside you. If you didn't tap into that root chakra energy, you would have never made it. If you would have kept trying to namaste your ass to death, you would have been raped in jail. You would have died in jail. You would have never made it. Sometimes you have to tap into that beast. And sometimes you have to tap into that God. The human is brand new. Excuse me. Let me not even say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say fuck that shit. Hell yeah. The human is brand new. The being has no time. Big difference. I'm not going to go into that right now. The Egyptians never worshipped idols. An idol tree was never an issue for them. Why not? Because an idol is a physical object and nothing more than a physical object. There was no such thing 
as idols in ancient Egypt because the ancient Egyptians' mentality could not conceive of any such notion. The concept of an idol was introduced by the Israelites, defined in the words of um, Psalmist, idols are products of human skill, meaning a craftsman, a sculptor, products of human skill, have mouths but never speak, eyes but never see, ears but never hear, noses but never smell, hands but never touch, feet but never walk, and not a sound from their throats. That's an idol. Be honest with you, idol is the bullshit you wear around your neck. All y'all walking around still wearing crosses around your neck. That's not idol. That shit ain't doing shit for you. Nothing. It don't speak to you. It don't touch you. It don't do shit for you. I ain't gonna show y'all my little shit around here, but the statues I got in this bitch, that shit, that shit speaks to me. <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm like, let me stop. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me keep going. Shit, my book's falling apart, too. All right, let's make sure they were holy. The idols, as apprehended by the Israelites, were not filled with anything. They were mere hollow uh, pretenses of life. They had no within. Idols such as this simply did not exist for the Egyptians. No representation was merely a representation. No representation was merely a representation. You know what this goes into as well? When I talk about when the European came into Egypt, and they said jewelry was for decoration? No. Nothing was merely for decoration. See, only someone who's cut off from nature does shit like that. Oh, what, what's this for, sir? Uh, uh, it's just decoration. They just wanted to look cute. No, 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 no. Nothing your advanced ancient ancestors did was for decorations at all. Everything had a specific purpose and science to it. Okay. It was a form of expression, it was a form of symbolism, or it was a direct science that you were supposed to see and read to your subconscious. That's why the hieroglyphs is actually a fall from our telepathy. That's why a picture is worth a thousand words, but then the same European that taught you that will turn around and say, well, they were primitive people because they had no writing system, so they were fucking retarded. So you're going to tell me the Nubians had no writing system, but had more periods in the, excuse me, had more periods in Sudan than they had in Egypt? So if I had no writing system, how did I have the mathematical prowess to build a fucking pyramid? And if my writing system dictates my intelligence, how the fuck was I an architect? I didn't need writing. I was telepathic. And we're still telepathic to this day. Let's, let's get, let me make that clear. Don't ever think you lost any of this shit. It's just dormant because you don't believe it anymore. You became a European now. So now you don't believe in your telepathy. And you feel your telepathy every damn day you feel your telepathy. And you doubt it. That's the worst part. You feel somebody on the other side of the door. You think about somebody and they call you right away. And you know what you say with your dumb European ass? What a coincidence. Oh, you gonna live forever, yo. You say these cliche lines that you were taught by by Europeans. What you need to say, damn, my telepathy is crazy today. Claim your divinity. Claim your divinity. Lose your human brain. Tap into your God mind. Let's continue. Now, representation. All physical images could become vehicles of an indwelling divine presence. All physical images could become vehicles of an indwelling divine presence. They all potentially had a within. Therefore, had the capacity to see, to hear, to smell, to indeed, and could also speak. As did the Colossus Menom, Thebes, well into Roman times. Only the Israelites could no longer hear them. In turn, psychic, everything of divine, demonic character fails to take into account the profound metaphysical basis of the ancient projections. Now, historical process, rather than consisting in a withdrawal of projections, has been, on the contrary, a process of intro projecting into the psyche spiritual powers that, for the ancients, 
had an um, excuse me, an ontological status that was independent of and prior to the psyche. Everything is spiritual before it's physical. You have the spiritual, then you have the mental, then you have the physical, right? When you are disconnecting these bridges, you're fractionalizing your own existence. Then that turns into projection instead of introjection, all right? You have to understand that your inside is well more important than your outside. But of course, we live in a society today where your surroundings dictate your inside. So the clothes you wear on the outside of your body dictate how you feel inside yourself. The car you're driving on the outside of your body dictates how you feel inside yourself. Now, for the women out there who are vain and so on and so forth, there's a degree to that because, to be honest with you, you're dealing with reflections when you deal with women. But for the men that are vain, you're dealing with what I'm saying and you're fractionalizing, breaking yourself between the physical matter that you're here to dominate. The woman dominates the spiritual. Oh, shit, I'm sorry, y'all. The woman dominates the spiritual. The man dominates the physical. Your vanity is an inner judgment. To a woman, her vanity is looking into a reflection. The reason she wants to look her best is because she's raising her energy to be her best. Now, don't get me wrong, today is distorted because y'all follow cave bitches. So yes, it's distorted. But you do not think that the ancient queens of your time did not do the most drastic aspects of beautification to themselves in order to deify their inner self? The ancients did not project. For the ancient Egyptians, therefore, it was possible for a coalescence to occur between the physical image and the spiritual power that it represented. The statue of the goddess Sekhmet in uh, figure 6.6, Sekhmet, for example, was not simply a physical representation of the goddess. Such statues were created with careful attention both to the material used, which is saying in quotations, hard di uh, diorite, and to the formal features carved into the stone. Important rites were performed upon the statue that had the effect of opening it toward the specific spiritual forces that the, go that the goddess mediated. What are we saying? Some of y'all might be artists out there. Some of y'all paint. Some of y'all make music. Some of y'all draw. Some of y'all do poetry. Do y'all got a ritual before you start painting? Do y'all got a ritual before you get into the studio? Do y'all got a ritual before you start writing your poetry? Now, don't get it wrong. Since you lived in a recessive society and you have adopted European dumb shit, your ritual might be getting drunk as hell, getting high as hell, and eating a bucket of chicken wings. It's still a ritual. And if you notice, if you don't do your ritual, the art don't come out the same. It don't feel the same. It doesn't flow through you the same. Right or wrong. So basically what they're saying here is the statue of the goddess Sekhmet, representation of the goddess the statue, careful attention, both material and and to formal features carved into stone, important rites were performed. Important rites were performed upon the statue. Rituals were performed upon statues. This opened up a gateway to that physical object to be a bridge to the spiritual entity it was connecting to. Are y'all getting this? You know what that's called in the white world? It's called sentiment. There are certain things that white people collect, like Nazi paraphernalia. Wink, wink. I wonder why. But there are certain things that white people collect, you know, like when they used to chop off your dick and balls and put it on a mantle inside their house. That's, that's kind of the same thing, because we're talking about sentiment. 
sentiment builds a connection between the object that would have no life. You're placing life into that object by creating sentiment between it, a resonance between it. Rituals create resonance in inanimate objects. When you do a ritual with an object, when your mother gave you something as a child and you held on to it every single day, every single day. Some of y'all have had things in your life that you cried when you lost it. And the person's looking at you like, nigga, that was a broken piece of plastic. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. Because the cycle you were in when you were presented that object, you projected upon that object a form of ritual. You know what the ritual was? Walking around with it in your pocket every day. You know what the ritual was? Looking at it every night as you fell asleep. Some of y'all women today have, have stuffed animals that you have since was a child and you can never let it go. You can never let it go. And that animal is alive. That stuffed animal is a living thing. Look at children. Once again, I'm always saying this. Look at children. They put life in objects. You know why they put life in objects? Because children are gods. And children are also... androgynous a child is any being under the age of seven any being under the age of seven is androgynous does this mean you could dress your little six-year-old like a like a girl and it's a boy no what this means is that child has no desire whatsoever towards either sex the six-year-old ain't worried about pussy you got to for you got to teach that to them. See, once you reach puberty though, that dick start getting hard, right? You like, "Oh shit." You you wondering why when little Becky bent over in the classroom, you, "Oh shit, your shit started getting swole." You didn't understand it though. That is the separation. You're not androgynous no more. But the child is androgynous. All right. Ancient Egyptians did for possible. All right. Rituals were done to physical objects in order to make them bridges between the spiritual and the physical world. That's what we're saying. So all the rites, all the rituals, everything you do to something physical creates a gateway upon that physical object to connect it to whatever intention is connected to whatever deity you're trying to create or deity you're trying to connect, which also goes back into deification because you could deify yourself and you can also deify an inanimate object. Continue. Yeah, that an opening into towards specific spiritual forces the goddess mediated through a combination of skill, craftsmanship, and performance of, of certain specific sacred rites. The statue could become a physical vehicle through which the goddess manifested as a tangible presence on the material plane. This is not idolatry. It is the invocation and apprehension of the divine in and through a material form, which is no longer simply a material form, but has acquired a within of spirit. Idol tree is you putting on a fucking Gucci shirt. That's idol tree. You know why the Gucci shirt means something to you? Because a white person told you it does. It didn't come from you. You saw Gucci somewhere on a celebrity, and bam, you created an idol. But when your mama gave you that little that little teddy bear as a baby, and you hugged it, and you, it was soft, and it smelled good, bam open the gateway in that teddy bear. You didn't give a fuck where the teddy bear came from. Think about some of y'all that got kids. You think they give a fuck where the toys come from? They don't give a fuck where it come from. You fucked up as a parent when you put them in front of that goddamn TV and allow the TV to tell them what's important. Because there was a point in time in our lives where your mama and your daddy could build you a toy from scratch and you would love that toy just as much as you love going to KB toy stores. But now we're synthetic soulless creatures following synthetic soulless people. So that's why your child wants an iPhone now. But if you didn't introduce them to the iPhone, they wouldn't want the iPhone. That's why at one point in time in our lives, a, a cardboard box could be a castle to us. That's why a stick from our backyard could be a sword to us. Because we took the power from within ourselves and projected it into that object and made it real. 
and held on to that object and made it special. We made it powerful. We turned that stick into a wand and it made magic. With the exception of the Israelites, the way Christians, for example, the discussion of the God's gods appears in total confusion between the gods themselves, the manifestation of the statue living in communion and the rep of life, mighty works. We glimpse in the vision of the hidden physical world. The gods could not be distinguished from their statues or images, and to have done so would have been a false to the ancients, as it would be questionable for us moderns to distinguish between a person and his or her body. Today, if I tell you that this little doll I have, oh, send this, wink, wink, for those of you who are my students, this little doll I have, who I have deified into my personal goddess named Osindis, you'll look at my grown man ass and call me a fucking nut. You will say I'm fucking psychotic. You will, you will make all the jokes in the world about my ass, and guess what? I won't give a fuck because I ain't human. But when I tell you that this Barbie doll that I got from Family Dollar that I did rituals over, that I did incantations over, that I used spe specific oils over, that I've given baths to, that I've bought wardrobes for, uh, excuse me, created wardrobes for, that I put real jewelry upon. If I tell you that I made that doll from Family Dollar into a real goddess who kept my home clean and who brought peace to my home, you will think I'm fucking nuts. Because you're a human. But basically what I did was what my ancient ancestors did. I took the power within myself and within my own intentions and I projected it onto an object to make it a gateway to a world that I could not get to by my, excuse me, that's not true because I could get to it. But I used it as a tool to make it easier for me. There we go. There we go. Almost said something wrong there. Glad I corrected myself. Because you could get to anywhere all by yourself. But everything I'm telling you right now is a tool. Why do you think I say the Egyptians fell? This is why they needed the statues. They needed the rituals. They needed the amulets. They needed the stones. Because they fell from a state where they were the gods. So they needed these tools to get back in touch with the gods. All right? The gods could not distinguish from the ancient and distinguish between a person and his body. While that person is alive and well, such distinctions are not necessary, which shows that we too are animists. Only we suffer from such a reduced animism that we are in danger of losing sight of the soul altogether. Whew. Well, you know, these motherfuckers ain't got no soul anyway, so they ain't losing nothing. We the ones losing our soul. We are the ones losing. Every time you adopt European bullshit, you are losing pieces of your soul. We may feel tempted to dismiss ancient animism and, and, and perhaps in a compass and, 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 or a point of view. Plot Plotinius. Now, every time they start quoting Greeks and shit, and also, never forget, the Greeks were submulato and domulatos. The Greeks were not real, real, real white people. The Greeks were submulato and the Greeks were domulato. Okay? So every time they want to use a Greek, an ancient Greek, to try to specify or try to solidify something they're getting a point across, Understand, they're talking about a mixed version of yourself. And this is why the Greeks were a combination of civilized and sick. Because if you mix sickness with civilized, you get a civilized, sick society. All right. Plotinus, or Plotinus, I'm sure I'm not saying it right, writing toward the end of the age of polyism, refers to those ancient sages who sought to secure the presence of the divine beings by the erection of shrines and statues. These sages, he says, showed insight into the nature of the all. They perceived that though this soul, the soul of the world, is everywhere tractable, its presence will be secured all the more readily when an appropriate pre uh, receptacle is elaborated. What did, what did he just say? The soul of the universe in the world is everywhere around you. But if you want to secure a piece of that soul, you can use an object and you can project your intentions of the knowingness of the all around you into that object, which will make that, which will make that presence and that energy always readily available. 
So you get a statue of Sekhmet, you put the intentions of Sekhmet into it, and you go to that statue of Sekhmet, and you receive the energy from that statue of Sekhmet. Does that mean that Sekhmet is God? No. Does that mean that Sekhmet is the all? No. Sekhmet is only a piece of the version of the all. It's only a piece of the expression of the source, which is the all. Let's continue. I, I really want to get to something main, honestly, because I, uh, I go on about this stuff forever. Uh, the body physical base, so forms we call uh, represent physical plane, images carbon is gonna return to LA. Papyrus test effect uh, activating a higher dimension, their spiritual counterpart. Ah, offerings for all y'all parasitic motherfuckers who think you could take, 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 and not offer nothing. You're a parasite. Let's get to it. The food offerings portrayed in front of um 10 in figure 6.7. I'm 10, 6.7. The food offerings portrayed in front of I'm 10 in figure 6.7, for instance, called into activity the latent spiritual form that the relief carving represented. Your offering activates the gate. Hello? You offering something of yourself activates the transmission of what you're receiving. You can receive anything. And it goes from one ear out the other. But in order to activate what you're receiving, you have to give something in exchange. Because once you give something in exchange, you're creating polarization. How does a bridge work? Does a bridge work by building half the bridge and then it doesn't connect to the other side? How do you cross a bridge like that? A bridge works by two sides connecting. So if you're opening a gateway, but you're sitting there holding back, and only wanting to receive, you're a parasitic dead motherfucker. Offerings are very important. Very important. If you have built an altar in your home, and you do not acknowledge that altar every single day, you do not place something on it, you do not say something to it, you don't stare at it, you don't like incense, you don't put a coin on it, you don't pour water on it, any of that shit, you got a dead, closed gateway. And now you sitting here getting mad in my DM talking about this shit don't work because you're a parasite and you're trying to feed and it's not working for you because you're dead. Okay, spiritual stuff. Did, blah, 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 blah. Food off your spiritual um, relief carving. The images, bread, meat, poultry, and so on. By the way, I've shown y'all already. For those of you who are in the religion of veganism, I've shown y'all already that our black, melanated ancient ancestors did eat meat. Here's what you humans are not understanding. They didn't eat every single day. They didn't eat three meals a day like your ass does listening to white people. So guess what? If I'm fasting constantly, but I eat a chicken wing once a year, Guess what? I'm going to be more healthy than the vegan nigga eating tofu every day. Are y'all understanding what I'm trying to say? This is why mine ascension teaches moderation. I don't teach you no super, super special specific diet like a religion. I don't give a fuck about the savvy list. No disrespect, but I don't give a fuck about a savvy list. That's a religion. That's a box. That's a box. And I'm a god. I don't belong in a box. I'm a divine being. I don't belong in a box. So I'm not going to follow a thousand things that I can't have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize the lower things, recognize the higher things, and I'm going to eat the higher things more often than I eat the lower things. Sounds simple. Images, two different dimensions. And the image, red meat, poultry, okay. Their offerings to these statues, their offerings to these gods could be bread, pastries, meat, uh, poultry, which is chicken and any flying bird. All right. Were thereby transubstantiated between two different dimensions of existence. All right. What do we? Oh, you know what? Because they actually say that. So I'm going to just read on. The image by invoking the essence of the substance imaged was itself magically transformed from being mere image to being an image infused with the spiritual substance it portrayed. All right. 
that picture that you think is just a picture, when I keep putting food in front of that picture, when I keep lighting candles in front of that picture, guess what I do? I transform the picture. Now the picture becomes a sigil and a symbol instead of just an image. Understand the difference between those words. The experience of the possibility of a coalescence between physical representation and spiritual entities lies behind the practice throughout the ancient world of making offerings to the gods and goddesses. Let me read that one more time. The experience of the possibility of a coalescence between physical representation and spiritual entities lies behind the practice throughout the ancient world of making offerings to gods and goddesses. Once again, I'm talking to y'all fucking parasites who take and have nothing to give. Or even worse, but excuse me, that's false. Because as long as you're a living entity and you're a living being, you always have something to give. You just might not have that thing to give that you think I only want. Your ancients understood that all gods and goddesses need offerings to activate the transmission of that power that made them a gateway in order to tap into. You cannot tap into the power of a goddess. You cannot tap into the protection of a goddess. You cannot tap into the activation of a goddess until you present that goddess with offerings. A lot of y'all are trying to tap into shit and not trying to exchange with it. And then you're wondering why magic doesn't work for you. You're wondering why manifestation doesn't work for you. And you're wondering why now you have two jobs and a spouse who hates your guts. The spirit is probably behind the practice of offering the gods. In figure 6.8, King Seti I offers two vases of milk to the goddess Sekhmet. An offering of food like this could be made to a spiritual being only because the food offered was perceived to have a spiritual as well as physical substance. Everything in nature was but an image of its spiritual archetype. The difference between actual physical food and a painting of food is according to this mentality. Okay, what's the difference between you placing a picture of a chicken wing on your altar and an actual chicken wing on your altar? The difference is the chicken wing actually has DNA in it. The, the chicken wing is actual physical material substance. The chicken wing is actually an organism at one point in time. Then on top of that, combined with what I just said, the intentions placed in that chicken wing as a spiritual intention has now opened the gateway as an offering to that god or goddess or that altar. Okay? Y'all understanding what I'm saying? could be spiritual being only because the food offer was perceived to have a spiritual as well as physical substance. The physical substance is the DNA. When you offer food, the physical substance is the DNA. The physical substance is the organic material. The spiritual substance is your intentions behind offering the food. All right? Spiritual physical substance. The difference between an actual physical food painting according to, uh, the, to this mentality of little significance when regarded from the perspective of, oh yes, here's the offering by the way. As you can see, he has both hands full. He's coming to the goddess, offering what he needs to to the goddess. Their shared spiritual essence. For the point is precisely that true reality is located on the spiritual plane. And it is to this plane that the magical consciousness primarily refers. Well-known example of this way of thinking is the widespread utilization of servant statues. In the funerary equipment, uh, yes, equipment of deceased persons from the Middle Kingdom on, the statues were supposed to come to life in the other world and perform tasks for the owner of the tomb. Basically, all right, we're running down now. We, we, we going down, guys. Subscribe. Share, comment, don't be a parasite, exchange. Talking and communicating is exchange, too. I'm not just talking about money, y'all. Get a consultation. Get a DM consultation. Get over-the-phone consultation. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Mind Ascension, I'm out.